I welcome all of you to this session. So friends, now everybody has heard about the incident of Bios Locker Group. The incident which has broke the entire community. And it, it has its own ramification in terms of the social issues, in terms of the moral issues, and in terms of the legal issues. And as of now, in the present session, we are we are going to discuss about the legal issue from this. So first coming to the fact of the so uh, first we come to the fact of the, this case. The fact of the case as reported from the media was that the one group was active on the Instagram named is Bias Local Group. The members of the group were circulating the photograph which were morphed of the minor girls. They were putting their sexual wonder and obscene comment, comments and also the comment regarding the rape, gang rape and the body shaming. And the another allegation which has uh, come into the media is that they have a fake Instagram group where the members have created their own profile by the fake names, by the anonymous names. So here in this session, we are going to discuss about the issues on which we have received so many queries. The issues are what crime has been committed by the group? What are the sections which are applicable and what will be the punishment? Can we turn this group as legal or illegal? Then the issues are what offenses are committed by the person who have shared the obscene material into the group? Then there are certain members who have claimed that they are the inactive members. They have not participated into that discussion. So what would be their liability? And in the last, what would be the liability of the Instagram for this pornographic content? So now we have done research on this on behalf of our society, cyber research and innovation society, which have been built to have a secure future in terms of the digital innovation for the society. We are here collaborating with the various technical person, the person from the government side, person from the technical side and try to evolve a solution for every problem which is on the internet so that we can provide the safe and secure environment on the, on the internet. So in order to deal this issue in a wider perspective and with an objective to educate the people, to create the awareness among the people about the gravity of the offense, what they need to do, how they need to pursue the complaint, and if a person has become a victim of an offense unknowingly, how to defend himself. So we have we are organizing a series of webinars today. We have the first webinar where we are going to deal some of the questions on relating to the uh, this bias leaker locker room case. Then we have the other four sessions relating to the child pornography. There we will go in depth, discussing all the issues, discussing the liability of all the stakeholders, discussing what a school, what a parent, what a teacher need to do. So we are going to cover the issue from the 360 degree angle, from the every angle. And in the last, we are going to discuss about if you want to punish an offender, how to go with it. So these, uh, you can join them and if you have any question, you can always send the question to us beforehand so that we can cover that particular question in our webinar. So I will share my email ID at the end of the session and your question and solutions are in paper. So first coming to one question, what is the pornography? So that is the one issue which is the most technical issue. But the definition which is there under section 67 of the IT Act, pornography means any material which is less vicious or appeal to the prudent interest or, it, or has its effect, such as to tend to deprive and corrupt persons who are likely having regard to all the relevant circumstances to read, see, or hear the matter contained or in it. So basically, uh, in a very simple word, 
any material which has the effect of corrupting the mind of the people and the next line is very important which i would like you to uh, kindly not it says circumstances having a regard to all relevant circumstances so then there are three words to read see or hear the matter contained or embodied in it so these are the most important words i come to so then we have the two type of pornography child pornography and adult right so no regarding the adult pornography is that a person in private can share the adult pornography there is no illegality about the adult pornography but even the adult pornography cannot be shared in the public domain if it is into the public domain it is an offense because once it is into public domain then it is being transmitted to the minor it is being transmitted to the person who are who are not intended for it. Right? Then we have the child pornography. Child pornography per se is illegal. Its possession, even its surfing, our IT provides that you go on the internet, right in the Google bar, child pornography, you get the number of website, you click on one website, offense is complete, and it has a punishment of five years. So child pornography per se is an offense. Even you cannot possess it, you cannot keep with it. you cannot share with it and it is an offense throughout the world and in fact i would say it is one of the most serious offenses in most of the countries so we have to look from that angle so now come to the child pornography so when we go through the provision of the information technology act information of the poxo act so basically we can divide out the offenses into three categories so rather we can say there are three categories which constitute the offense of child pornography first is oral communication about sex so when anybody communicate with any child with a minor who is under the age of 18 year about the sex it is an offense of child pornography because here the communication is being made to the child and it is immaterial whether the material which you are communicating is regarding the adult pornography or it is regarding the regarding the child pornography that is the first kind second category is when we are sending the anybody sends the child pornographic material to anyone so here material may be sent to the adult material may be sent to the child in both the cases we could be an offense and the material may be the real material material may be the simulated material. simulated materials means when you create a cartoon when you create a picture when even you create a sketch by your drawing related to the pornography you send it to the child it is an offense you create a uh, content regarding the child pornography you send it to the adult it is an offense so in both the cases it could be an offense third is the category means you send the pornography data to the child so in all the these three categories the offense is laid out so from if you will look from this angle uh, with respect to the fact of the voice locker room case number one the material regarding the child pornography has been shared in the group so that is the one way how the offense is made out second it is being communicated to the member of the group who are minor that the second way the offense is made out third when the comments are being posted on these uh images that is the oral communication about so from all the three angle it is an offense of child pornography so uh, one of the very interesting thing which i would like to share with you that sharing of the pornographic material in a public domain is an offense so whether it may be a material relating to that pornography material relating to child pornography. so if you will look from this angle every website on the internet where the child where the pornographic data is transmitted published again whether it may be adult pornography whether it may be child pornography it constitute an offense and 
Why it constitutes an offence? Because now internet is deemed to be a public platform. It is a public place. So the, now there are a number of judgments of that issue. So there is no controversy. So applying this logic, that means that on every website, one offence is made up. So the another question is, who will make a complaint? How the offence could be registered? How the action need to be taken? So here another very important point, the line which have earlier referred, I referred to. All the person who having regard to the relevant circumstances can read, see or hear, can find the complaint. So here any person can find the complaint who have read, seen or heard. And any person means even a police officer can make a complaint. So action can be taken soon. So that means all the website which you can see on the internet where the pornographic material is being published that need to be prosecuted, that need to be blocked. But why the government is not blocking? So there is no answer. So the another way to look upon it is these are the websites through which the pornographic data is being disseminated, published is basically corrupting the mind of our child and which persuaded them to do such illegal activities. So it is very necessary for us to block all this content so that we can protect our future generation. And again, I'm adding one word, no complaint is required. Government and the police can do on its own without any complaint. And in fact, number of FIR has already been registered by the police on pornographic website. So there is nothing which stop them from taking the action. So we should pursue them to take that action to block all these websites. Now coming to the sections which are applicable. So first we have the section 66C. How section 66C is made up? Section 66 C is for identity theft. So if a person has created his profile, which is fake, which is anonymous, or which is by the name of the another person, in all the three situations, section 66 can be evoked if provided for a punishment of three years. So that would be applicable in the present case if anybody had manipulated the his identity. Second is section 67A. Section C for the obscenity for the pornography, we have the three sections. One is the section 67. When you transmit any obscene data, any pornographic data, you publish it, you transmit it, offensive data. Right? Second is when your uh, material which is published contains sexually explicit act, where some act is going on, sexual act is going on, sexual activity is going on, then it would be section 67A. Under section 67, the punishment is three years. Under section 67A, the punishment is five years and it is non believable Third is the section 67B, which is the one of the most harsh section in the information technology. This section deals with the child pornography. Why it is said to be harsh? Because it made even surfing of child pornography on the internet as an offense. So that means if you go there, you put the uh, word child pornography in the Google bar, you got a number of websites, you click on one website, the offense is complete. So in the case, because the data which relates to the child, which relates to the minor girl has been shared, shared with the children, so offense under section 67, 67 which is made out, which has a punishment of five years and fine up to rupees five, or up to rupees ten. Then we have the provision which are more stringent under the POCSO. So section 11 of the post Act defines the sexual harassment. And basically, this is a very exhaustive definition which covers everything which relates to the child pornography. 
women to put in birth, to put in a gesture, to put in an object with a sexual intent. It amounts to sexual harassment. You show any pornographic video, it amounts to a sexual harassment. You follow a child on the internet through the electronic means of physically, you say, offense of sexual harassment. You threat the child to use his photo in any fabricated or real picture, video, it is an offense of sexual harassment. So every offense from every angle is covered under the, in the definition of sexual harassment. So in the present case, because the data of the minor has been shared, comments have been posted, threatening has been made regarding the rape, gang rape and all these things, it amounts to sexual harassment. Here also the punishment which is provided is three years and with fine under section 12 of the Oxford. Now coming to the another uh, provision, section 13, which is more strict for you. It deals with the use of child for pornographic purposes. <clears throat> when the images of the minor have been shared, right? And they are being used for making the comment for the pornographic purpose, it would be an offense under section 30. Because it's a specifically provided whether you are doing it for personal or so let us see. Second, when you are doing it for sexual gratification through representation of sexual organ of the child, usage of a child engaged in real or stimulated in the center of seeing representation of child. In all the three cases, it will be covered under section 13 and it is an offense under uh, with the punishment of five years. And here I would like to add one important thing that it is immaterial whether the child is filing a complaint or not. So that means the only thing, only the basic requirement to be satisfied is that the image should belong to a mind. So that is the only requirement. So in all these cases, even if these girls have not made any complaint, they are not coming to the court for making any reposition. It does not make any difference. Now coming to the another provision, section 19. Right? So section 19 deals with that if a person comes to know that an offense relating to child pornography has been committed or likely to be committed, it is his duty to inform to the local police, to inform to the special juvenile unit. If it does not inform that, then it is an offense under section 21 of the Oxford. Another point, if it informed to the police, police does not register the case, it is also an offense against the police. So all these persons, and including the police officer, who refuse to register the case or does not register the case, is liable for punishment under this section and the punishment provided is the six months. So some of the other provisions which are also applicable, both the people in the present case, section 120. So where a group of persons conspired together with a common objective, so then they would be liable for prosecution. An interesting part here is that if there is an evidence against one person, that would be written in the other person. So here, if there is an offense done by the active member, inactive member, all that evidence can be read against the inactive member. Section 109, abetment. Abetment is for the party who is providing the support. So when we talk about the publication in the electronic media, so it means all the website or the service provider which has provided a platform like Instagram, they are liable to be prosecuted for abetment under section 109 of IPC. Third is section 201, destroying the evidence. So it was, it has come into the media that after the recession of the FIR, number of person had deleted the profile, removed the application. So they are liable to be prosecuted under section 201 in addition to the main offense. So their punishment would be more enhanced. Then we have the section 10509 of the IPC, which says if you are intruding upon the privacy of a woman, then again it would be an offense. Here again, it is not necessary that the woman should be complained. So if the 
Second link of the 509 ITC, which has its own independent existence, and police can even initiate the proceeding on this without any complaint. So these are some of the sections which would be applicable. Now we will come to the different scenario. For example, but uh, so sorry. Before that, I want to add two another offence which could be made out uh, in this present case. So there is one another allegation regarding the morphing of the photographs. So morphing amounts to forgery under section 464. And when you are using a false document, then section 471 of the ITC would be applicable. And at the same time, if a person make a complaint, then also 469 would be applicable because then you are using the false document for defaming a particular person. But if the person is not making a complaint, for example, if that minor does not make a complaint, 469 would not be applicable. But if the minor make a complaint, then 469 would be applicable. But for the same thing, one would be applicable only for use of the false document. So now when we come to the morphine, when, come to, when we come to the forgery, can it be detected using technology? So my answer is it can be detected very easily. Even if a person use advanced technology, if a person use a defect, defect technology, it can be uh, detected through the technology, which is there for the video forensic. So there are basically three technologies. One is the error level analysis, second is the sensor spectrum voice analysis, third is the photo response non-uniformity voice spectrum analysis. So with all these three techniques, it can always be found out if this person is forged or not. And on this particular concern aspect, we are coming with a different video which you will get on my YouTube channel by tomorrow. So you can see we have uh, already taken the sample pictures and we are going to show how that can be done. Now coming to the specific question for uh, which I got so many queries uh, from the uh, various stakeholders. So first is whether the group is legal or illegal. So here, as we have discussed in the beginning, accessing child pornography, surfing it, possession of it, publishing it, transmitting it is an offense. So once the that group is being used for selling the child pornographic material, the group becomes illegal, and all the member of the group becomes conspirators. So the group is done for creating an offence under section 67 b for creating an offence under section 11, 12, 13 of the POCSO Act. So it is a illegal group and all the members are liable to be prosecuted as the conspirator. But here is another different issue that these are the minor, these have made the mistake, they have been persuaded. So these are some of the issues which we need to look for the social and the moral uh, approaches, angles, but as far as the law is concerned, it is one of the serious grave offense and here law does not distinguish between the uh, uh, inactive or active member, intention or not intention, so I will come. We will come. Now second, the person who have posted the content, because now some of the people claims that we have not posted anything, that's going to make any difference. But what would be the liberty who, the, for the person who is posting? So the person would be liable to be prosecuted under section 67 b of the Information Technology Act for publishing or transmitting the material. Under section 12 of the POSO Act and also under section 13 of the POSO Act using the child for the pornography purpose. As we have discussed in the beginning all these sections, so the person who have shared would be liable for prosecution under all the three provisions. Now coming to the role of the member who participated in the chat, because some of them are claiming that we are not participating in the chat. See, when there is an offense of conspiracy, all would have the equal method. So, see, liberty under section 67 B I K is made out the moment you see the child pornography, the moment you download it, Moment you store it, so when it is into your group, you it is implied that you are watching it. 
you have downloaded it into your mobile, you have stored it on your mobile, so you are liable for procedure under section 67 to that day. Similarly, under section 11 of the POPSO Act for showing the pornography to the other children. Liberty under section 13 of the POPSO Act for using the child for sexual education. See, when it is into the group which is accessible to you, you how you can say that I have not watched it, I have not downloaded it, I have not stolen it. So the burden may be on the prosecution, but even the prosecution has got even a single mobile where they could see all the members that would be sufficient for prosecuting the members for the offense of uh, under the IPA, offense under the POXO, and as well as the IPC. So, liberty under section 21. So, here only the difference is that if the person is major, major he is also liable to be punished under section 21. But if the person is minor, he cannot be punished. And under section 509, also everyone is liable, particularly the person who is chatting. That means he is also adding the word for the purpose of. Uh, contributing to the child pornography. So then he would also be liable to be prosecuted under section 509 of the IPC. Now coming to the uh, role of the person, uh, role of the inactive member, because some of the members who are claiming is that they are inactive, they have not participated. So they would be liable under section 67 of the IPC, they would be liable under section 13 of the and they would also be liable. Sorry. And here I would like to add one thing. See, when we come to the active or inactive, so basically we always take the defense on the basis of intention. But under the POXO Act, I'm telling you the very important thing, please note down. Under the POXO Act, under Section 30, whether you have an intention or not, the burden is on you. It is not for the prosecution to prove that you have a malefact intention. It is for you to prove that you do not have the malefact intention. How you can prove it? So this would be one of the bigger challenge during the trial of this case. Now coming to the role of the person who have taken the shot from the group, posted in the social media, which ultimately is leading to the controversy. See, here, the transmission of the content itself is an offense. Its publication, so that the public can view it, itself is an offense. So the person who has even posted on it is also liable for all the offenses under the Foxo Act, under the Information Technology Act, as we have discussed. Now the question is, what he should have done? So whether he should not have disclosed it to the public or media, so the answer is when the issues of child pornography, the only option which was available to me, the recourse which is provided in the law is to file a complaint with the police. So he should have given the information to the police. By transferring it into the social media, the person who have shared has made himself liable for the prosecution, liable for the punishment up to five years. Now, coming to the another point, the role of an administrator. So, I got a number of queries that sir, there is a judgment of Delhi High Court, there is a judgment of Bombay High Court, that an administrator of a group is not liable. Correct. But administrator is not liable when the material does not relate to child pornography. But if the material related to, to the child pornography, which the possession of which itself is illegal, Viewing the child pornographic material is also illegal and subject to the prosecution, then the group administrator is fully liable like any other person. And in fact, the only recourse which was available, available to the group administrator was to preserve the evidence and to file the complaint with the police. That was the only way by which he could have escaped the punishment. So, group administrator is liable under section 67 B of the IPA, liable under section 13 of the POXO Act, he is also liable for the offense under section 21 of the POXO Act. 
Let me give the Instagram. Instagram. So we have seen so many questions on this issue, so many articles, so many videos that Instagram has. So when we come to the ability of the Instagram, so here if you will go to section 67, 67 A and B. It says whoever publishes or transmit or causes to be published or transmit. So Instagram is liable as an abetter. Because there can be two situations. One, the website has the knowledge. Website, website is into conspiracy with the publisher. So that we cannot gather from the fact of this case. So here, the website is only providing a platform or mechanism to commit an offense. So its liability is of an abetter. But under section 79A of the IT Act, abetter is not liable, uh, sorry, internet service providers are not liable for prosecution. They are exempted from prosecution, provided two conditions are set. Number one, when the fact comes to their knowledge, they must remove the content. So that is the first requirement. Second, that they would preserve the relevant evidence with respect to that. In case of non-compliance, if they do not comply with this provision, they are liable to be prosecuted as an abettor for all the main offenses. Second, as per section 21 of the OXO Act, they are also duty bound to inform to the police to make a complaint once the fact comes to their knowledge that the, the content relating to the child pornography is being shared. So here in this case, if they have not uh, uh, informed the police after coming to know about the child pornography, they are again liable to be prosecuted. Liability of the parent or teacher. So these were one of the questions which has come to us. So if the parent or teacher has come to know about the content of child pornography being published or separated in a group from their student or from their child, they were also due to bond to inform to the police. Failing which they are liable to be prosecuted under section 21 of the Oxo Act for a punishment up to six months in prison. So these are the provisions dealing with the uh, this boys locker room case and the offenses which are made out. So we welcome you to send whatever your comment or suggestions are there, and now we can take the questions from the part. So, anybody has any question, please raise your hand so we can uh, unmute you and we can take the question. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chaturvedi. Yes, Mr. Pandey. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Can you listen to me? Mr. Pandey? Uh, can you listen to me, uh, Neeraj ji? Hello? Neeraj ji, can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Hello? Hello? Hello, can you listen to me? Mr. Pandey, can you hear uh, me? I, I can listen to you. Can we you listen to me? Your voice. Please uh, can you listen? We have already unmuted uh, you. Yeah, uh, my... Yeah. Yes, yes, Mr. Pandey, please continue. Hello? Hello? Can you listen to me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. I can listen to you. Yes, yes, Mr. Pandey. Yes, yes, Mr. Pandey. Yes, yes, Mr. Pandey. Yes, yes, Mr. Pandey. Yes, yes, Mr. Hello? Yes, Mr. Pandey? Uh, look, my question is, as... Uh, Hello? Uh, uh, can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Mr. Pandey, 
कैन यू लिसन टू मी हेलो 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 सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन लाइक नाउ डेज एवरी चाइल्ड हैज अ मोबाइल आई थिंक देर इज सम कनेक्टिविटी इशू but sir then you can put your question into the comment box and you can that. answer that question i just right right thank you yeah. ha now so there is one question from uh, mr harish that a person saw video and later on reported to the police can he also indulge as an accused see once you have reported it to the police then you would not be an accused so it is provided in section 21 moment you are making a complaint then even if you are retaining the copy for giving as an evidence you would be a complainant you would be a witness you would not be an accused no you know but chat chat हेलो हेलो हाँ देर इज अनदर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस सरदीप कौर क्वेश्चन हाउ कैन वी यू कैन सी फर्स्ट एंड वेरी इंपोर्टेंट थिंग इज that you must tell that child child that it is a grave offence second and very under important thing which we are going to explain in our subsequent session not in europe in us in most of the countries they have applied filter at the level of the service provider and whenever any person is accessing the child pornographic data uploading something this particular isp is able to capture that information and that is being then a complaint is being sent to the police and on the similar basis one lieutenant colonel from calcutta was arrested when he was sending some child pornographic material and one of the service provider in germany they got hold of that information they filed the complaint with the uh, interpol and the interpol in germany filed the uh, referred the complaint to the interpol in india and accordingly Uh, they registered the FIR and the that lieutenant colonel was arrested. So I tell you, on a similar level, the complaint against thousands of persons, as of now, even is pending with the CBI and also with the various police department that these persons have accessed the child pornography material from particular IP address. So do not think that if you are accessing, nobody is watching you. Automatically, the complaint is being captured. And you will never know when the police will come and arrest you and can take that. So the important thing is that we need to educate the people. We need to create the awareness about the this particular legal proposition. Once the children would know that this is the serious offence, offence and its gravity, probably they would not go for such type of searching of child pornography material. Thank you. uh whoever has shared the data in public domain for a given exposing that person is also liable for the prosecution next question ah uh, then now we have the another question from our party that as the voice local room case is in private domain as whatsapp chat how can they be held liable see instagram and whatsapp both are on different side. in case of whatsapp there is only transmission but in case of instagram there is also publication with the group so because of their different technical architecture the instagram can be prosecuted but the 
they only when if they come to know and they are not know. Otherwise, they are not aware. So they can certainly say the inside one can always say that we are not aware because it is a private communication among the parties. But once they come to know, they would become aware. But I think the police have taken the action immediately on coming to know about this episode. So probably by that time, even the Instagram has to have taken the uh, they have done their compliance, so it may be very difficult to make them laugh. But again, that depends upon the fact of the case and what evidence the police have kept. So, without that, I cannot tell you the, uh, exactly what police are saying. Next, next, next. So, there is another question from Dr. Anil Chaturvedi that, sir, my 15 year 